Hello you too, so Mr Malan back again and we're going to be reading a bit more slime today. So last time we had Ned deciding that he was going to play a trick on Edmund and Edmund Envy at their toy shop because he had saved up all his money to buy a very special toy. But unfortunately, Edmund and Edmund Envy of the toy shop decided to play a trick on him, which meant he broke the toy by accident and it wasn't his fault. And then they took all his money anyway. So he's gone into the toy shop now. Slime is waiting on the roof. And now he says that he's got a very special toy that could make Edmund and Edmund Envy very, very happy. A toy that they have never seen before. And he's going to introduce them to the world of slime. Chapter 15. Giant Jelly Babies. Nothing happened. The Envy twins looked all around their emporium before returning their beady-eyed gaze to the boy. Why are you shouting, boy? demanded Edmund. We are standing right here, added Edmund. A feeling of panic washed over Ned. As Slime was all the way up on the roof, it must not have heard. There was only one thing for it. Shout louder! I said I want to introduce you both to the wonderful world of... Slime, repeated Ned. Still nothing. Things were not going to plan. Slime, a boy shouted again, but nothing. Nada, zilch. The Envy twins shared a look. Why, oh, why do you keep shouting slime, asked Edmund. Because if we say it loud enough, it will magically appear. Oh, oh indeed, agreed Ned. So let's all try together on three. One. Two, three. But before they could shout, slime, slime appeared. It was gushing down the chimney and began flowing through the fireplace all over Envy's emporium. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, slime called out. I was on the loo. Ned looked puzzled. He had no idea slime had to go to the loo. What would it pass? More slime? There wasn't time to think about that. All at once the shop was awash with slime. <gasps> no! shouted the pair and this time it was Ned's turn to do the chuckling. The two men were up to their knees in the stuff. Slime whisked the boy up and placed him onto the counter. Out! bellowed Edmund at the slime. Shoo! bawled Edmund. Be gone! they both screamed but still the slime was rising and rising and rising in the shop. Now slime began Ned. Yes Ned replied slime as it was now coming up to their necks. I want you to transslime into a dozen little children. What? exclaimed the Envys. Just a dozen, you say? asked Slime mischievously. Uh, let's make it a nice round hundred, replied the boy. No! cried the pair of twins, but there was nothing they could do. In a moment, Slime began breaking up into a hundred blobs, and those blobs took the shape of children. Soon, there was an army of giant jelly babies. Children! screamed Edmund. Children! Children everywhere! Now, kids, called out Ned, help yourself to any toy in the shop. No! cried Edmund, but there was no stopping them. The children of every size, shape and colour began taking the toys off the shelves until Envy's Emporium was completely empty. The Envy twins tried to stop the children by snatching toys back, but then another jelly baby will come up behind them and give them a good old whack around the head of a toy. Poof! Oh! The biggest of the giant jelly babies ran to the counter and Ned pushed himself onto his shoulders. Time to go, ordered Ned, and all the other giant jelly babies charged out behind him, all proudly holding their toys. Word must have spread around the island, but something was going on at Envy's Emporium. The frizzy-haired girl was back, and this time she brought her friends. There were children from all over Mulch waiting outside the shop, and the giant jelly babies handed the children a toy each. Oh, thank you, Ned. Oh, you are the best. That's brilliant. Serves the twins right. Oh, wow. Cool, shouted the children as they made off of the loot. And inside the shop, Edmund and Edmund were broken men. They fell to their knees and howled in despair. But Ned slowly opened the door before shouting through the gap. Boo! And the twins screamed. Chapter 16, The Perfect Shade of Green. From high in the sky, the island's park rolled into view. Slime had transslimed into a pterodactyl and a flying reptile that had ruled the skies millions of years ago. Ned was riding on its back with a smug-tastic grin on his face. 
A pterodactyl darkening the sky must have been a terrifying sight for anyone. Not that there ever were many people in Mulch Park anyway. That's because the park keeper forbade it. Aunt Greta Greed had appointed the old soldier Captain Pride as the island's park keeper. The man took such great pride in the kingdom of Parkdom that nobody was ever allowed inside. Keep off the grass is a sign you might see in the park. Keep off the path? Less so. Keep off the park? Never. There was no doubt that the park keeper kept the most perfect park, not just on the island, but in the whole world. And the grass was an exact shade of green. Not too brown, but not too yellow, just green. If a blade of grass became in any way discoloured, Captain Pride would dangle himself over the lawn with his special prize, with his special prize lawnmower. And this was a piece of apparatus that Captain Pride himself, ex-member of the Queen's Guard, had invented. It consisted of a winch, a harness and a series of ropes and pulleys. Pride's mower allowed the captain to dangle over the grass without touching it. Then he would take out his 24-piece green felt-tip pen set with every shade of green imaginable, but no other colours. Then dangling just above the ground, the captain would colour in a discoloured blade of grass so it matched all the others perfectly. The park keeper was doing just, what he, just that when he heard the flapping of prehistoric wings overhead. F -f 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 of all the things a park keeper expected to see that day, a flying reptile was not one of them. In his army years, Captain Pride had witnessed many terrifying things while serving the jungle. He had woken up to discover a python slowly digesting his right foot as he slept. Ah! Oh, Been blasted in the bottom by a bazooka. Boom! And tiptoed over stepping stones to cross a river, only to discover they were actually snapping crocodiles. He stumbled across a group of gorillas who were intent on playing kiss chase with him. Yuck, yuck, yuck. And being caught in a stampede of elephants. Then marched around as flat as a pancake for weeks, looked in the mirror to shave his beard off. Except on closer inspection, it wasn't a beard. Ah, no, it was a great big hairy caterpillar squatting on his chin. Yanked on what he thought was a toilet chain, only to find it was, in actual fact, the tail of a tiger, put on his underpants, only to discover that they were crawling with cockroaches, come face to face with a hungry hippopotamus. The creature burped with such force it blew him clean over. And most horrifying of all, opened the door of the wash tent, only to be greeted by the sight of the old major taking a bath. But Captain Pride had never, ever seen a pterodactyl, which was understandable as they had got extinct millions of years before let alone a pterodactyl made of slime with a boy riding on his back. What the blazes, he bawled. In shock, his 24-piece green pen set tumbled to the ground. As he tried to snatch at his precious pens, he accidentally let go of a lever on his, on his prize mower, and the rope spun through the apparatus. And the next thing he knew, the captain found himself hoisted high into the air by his ankles. There he began swinging to and fro in a manner most unbecoming for a man of military bearing. Swish, 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 swash, and his head thumped a tree. Bonk! His bottom slapped a rose bush. Then horror upon horror, the slime pterodactyl set its mighty feet down on the park's lawn, its mighty claws digging into the grass. No! cried Captain Pride, swinging himself as hard as he could to get himself free from his apparatus. Whoosh! This he did, although not without landing upside down in a hedge. Bonk! Oof! Can't you read the sign, you dinosaur? Captain Pride hollered as he brushed bits of hedge off his blazer and smoothed down his moustache. Keep off the grass! The pterodactyl translimed back into being a blob. Ned slid off his friend onto the park bench, which had never, ever been graced of a single bottom. After all, there was a huge sign that read, Keep off the bench! What the devil is that thing, boy? demanded the captain. Where's my friend? replied Ned. I'm Slime, said Slime. He reached out a blobby hand for the captain to shake. The man's nose wrinkled in disgust. From the bench, the boy looked down under his feet at the perfectly green grass. The grass is looking especially green today, Captain Pride, he chirped. I said off! I brushed that grass only this morning, protested the captain, waving a toothbrush from his breast pocket as proof. You have another sign that says keep off the path, remarked Slime. Yes, replied the captain. Well, where or where can we stand then? asked Slime. Absolutely anywhere you like, as long as it's outside my park. Now be gone. But the pair were in no mood to go. The two friends shared a smile. A naughtiness was about to begin.
chapter 17 of a book of park occurrences. My basketball rolled onto the grass that time, didn't it, Pride? announced Ned from the park bench. Captain Pride to you, the man thundered. Didn't it? Private Pride, replied Ned, enjoying winding up the proud man. Captain, I remember it well, said the park keeper. All serious incidents are noted down in my book of park occurrences. Let me look. The man pulled a little red leather bound notebook from his blazer pocket. And embossed on the cover were the words, Book of Park Occurrences. Let me see, January the 1st, began Pride, leafing through the pages. Not a happy new year is at, oh, 700 hours, highly offensive sweet trapper blows into park. Entire area is sealed off until culprit who drops said sweet trapper is found and fined. Ned looked at Slime, and Slime looked at Ned. Both rolled their eyes at each other. 14th of February, oh, 900 hours, a pigeon does his doodars on the newly waxed park bench. Pigeons are brought into the park shed for questioning one by one until one of them squawks. Ned and Slime sighed at this little man. Ah, oh, yes, here it is. March for third. Captain Pride was becoming animated now. Eleven hundred hours, a basketball is bounced over the wall from the nearby playing fields and lands on the grass. It bounces repeatedly, seven times to be precise, before eventually coming to a stop. One blade of grass is killed. Another is seriously injured. Basketball is dealt with in an instant with military precision. I puncture it with my litter collecting spear. That basketball, Captain, was a Christmas present for my granny, said the boy sorrowfully. She sent it all the way from the Isle of Stench. It accidentally bounced over the wall. Why didn't you just throw it back when I asked you? The captain's moustache bristled. Ha! I did throw it back, he protested. Only after you'd burst it, replied the boy. I still threw it back, old boy. The captain's left eye began to twitch. Right, I want you out of my park. Now. Ned looked at Slime. All in good time. First, we need a little... Something for you to jot down in your Park Occurrences book. It is called the Book of Park Occurrences, not the Park Occurrences book, corrected the captain. Slime, continued Ned, I think we need to cause some mischief. Oh, goody, goody, agreed his friend. A thousand sweet wrappers, if you please. What the blazes, spluttered Captain Pride. Now, shouted the boy. Halt, cried Pride. The little man could make a big noise, but it was too late. Slime translimed into not a hundred, but a thousand sweet wrappers of every colour imaginable. They floated through the air, dancing on the breeze. Captain Pride ran around in circles, trying to grab them, but to no avail. Ned laughed. Now let's have a hundred basketballs. And at once the sweet wrappers clung together to form huge basketballs that bounced up and down on the grass with glee. The grass! My precious grass! Keep off the grass! yelled Pride. But there was just two Many of them. He ran to fetch his litter spear and stabbed at them, but whenever he hit one, it just soaked him in slime. Oh, let's not forget the pigeons. Oh, no, let's not forget the pigeons, repeated Slime, as one of the slime basketballs had Slime's face on it. Of course not, said Ned. In an instant, every one of those hundred basketballs became a pigeon. Not just any pigeon, a pooping pigeon. A super duper whooper pooping pigeon. Splat, splat, splat. And as the birds looped and twirled through the air, they dropped their load of multicoloured slime poop everywhere. Splat, splat, splat. The lawn was splatted. Splat, splat, splat. The path was splatted. Splat, splat, splat. The shed was splatted. Splat, splat, splat. The bench was splatted. Splat, splat, splat. Halt! barked Bride. I command you to halt in the name of greater greed. I think just one last military fly pass ordered Ned. And Slime knew what the boy meant. And immediately the birds gathered information as they were an uh, Air, Air Force stunt team. They turned high in the sky before coming straight for Captain Pride. Halt! He bellowed. That's an order! But they didn't stop. And they kept coming. The old soldier began to run away, but he was no match for the Slime Pigeons. They swooped over his head, dropping their load right on top of him. Splat, 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 Captain Pride was splatted. Dirty beasts, cried the man. His moustache, his blazer, his slacks, his highly polished boots, every last part of him was covered in goo. Oops, remarked Ned. You seem to have a tiny speck or something on you, Captain Prode. A red mist of fury descended upon the park keeper. I'll get you, boy, he yelled as he charged at Ned of his little spear. Charge, and it's not Prode, it's Pride. And just in time, the slime pigeons swooped down to Ned 
and whisked him up from the park bench high into the air. Another day, Captain Proud, he called out from above, and with the beast of a hundred slimy wings, the boy vanished into the clouds. Wow, I can't wait to find out what happens next. I hope you enjoyed that, guys, and I'll be back another day with some more of David Williams' slime. So well done today, another great day of learning, and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye for now.